Hello ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are doing well and in the month of April we decided to tackle on the challenge of doing cold showers for a month and I didn't really film myself too much within the bathroom uh, so instead I decided to make a video and talking about some of the benefits so I have some notes that I want to share with you guys in this video I wanted to go over what is cold exposure the benefits of cold exposure the two different types of cold exposure the health benefits and how you can also utilize it as well. And if you guys want to deep dive more into it, there's countless of um, well, like health experts. I would recommend visiting Andrew Huberman's cold exposure podcast. There's other doctors that have popularized the concept of um, heat therapy as well as cold therapy. So feel free to check that as well as read some research papers at your own discretion. With that stated, let's jump right into the notes. So here's <laughs> the notes that I've taken. Um, some of the shower benefits include improved circulation, boost immune system, and enhanced recovery. So again, the key points that we're going to be going over today is what is cold exposure? What are the health benefits of cold exposure? The two different types of cold exposure, how you can enjoy the benefits, and who is it for? And these are the sources that I used. Um, Science Direct and Andrew Huberman's Deliberate Cold Exposure Podcast. So what is cold exposure? Cold exposure is the act of exposing one's body to cold temperature. That's essentially what it is. And it could be in the form of taking cold plunges, uh, hyperbaric cham chambers, taking uh, cold plunges. <laughs> and it could also be such as skiing, taking winter sports. And I also wanted to talk about the horm hormetic effect. It's also called uh, hormesis. So this is when you expose your body to stress. Uh, your body actually strengthens based upon, you know, the stress level and your body adapts to it and you receive some positive benefits. And cold exposure is related with hormesis. So why would anyone do this voluntarily? Well, when you do this action, you're out of your, out of your own will, your own volition, there are positive psych physiological changes that occur within your body. And so now we're going to be talking about the health benefits. Number one, we have increased blood flow. Cold temperatures cause your blood vessels to constrict, helping you improve your circulation and blood flow. Increased blood flow uh, means you're delivering more nutrients and oxygen to the muscles in your organs much more efficiently. Active number two, activation of brown adipose tissue. I didn't really learn about this, so this was really interesting. So BAT, aka the brown fat, is activated when your own body needs extra heat. This occurs when you're when you have a fever or a bear that's awakening from hibernation. And so here's like a picture of an infant. When we're babies, we have a lot of brown fat, as you can see over here. And as we grow, uh, because we develop the ability of sweating, we don't really, we lose brown fat as we age, right? Brown fat acts as a, a built-in heater. You lose this because we form a shiver response. So this is kind of like, <laughs> this is a way of how I understood this concept. It's kind of like Pokemon acquiring a new skill. So as we age, we learn this new ability of shivering response and thus we don't really need um, as much brown fat as we were when we were infants. Cold exposure stimulates and activates brown adipose tissue, which is a type of fat uh, that can help our body burn calories and also generate heat. It helps the body burn fat for fuel and increase endurance. So that's another benefit. Number three, release endorphins. So these are the feel good chemicals. You guys probably heard of this in, in your biology class. Endorphins are natural painkillers and mood boosters that can help act, alleviate pain and promote feelings of pleasure and well being. Releasing endorphins can help improve your mood, reduce anxiety and depression, and, and improve your cognitive ability. And then improved immune condition. Cold exposure helps increase production of white blood cells, which are important for fighting infections and diseases. So this is a picture of kind of like how you your immune system works. There's bacteria, your there's bacterium, and then this is a white blood cell that engulfs the bacterium and digests it. The bacteria is engulfed, and then after <laughs> the bacteria, you know, uh, is digested, then it it's released into waste particles uh, this is the expel phase so yeah this was super cool like uh, getting a good get refresher of like how our body works it's it's so fascinating um and then another th point we have here is improved mental health and there's 
far more uh, health benefits if you guys just want to really deep dive into, you know, cold therapy. But these were kind of the the main points that I found, uh, which is improved mental health. Cold exposure can stimulate production of norepinephrine, a neurotransmitter that can help improve your mood, increase focus and reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression. So we kind of talked about this uh, with endorphins. So I guess it's a uh, endorphins and norepin norepinephrine. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing this. It's I, I'm pretty sure there's some correlation there. So it could help you better cope with stress and anxiety. And this is also related with the hormetic effect, we, which we discussed about. Now let's talk about the two types of cold exposure. The two types of cold exposure includes acute, which means it's involving short bursts of cold temperature. So this could be cold shower, ice bath, what also uh, cryotherapy as well as cold blunge. And we also have the second type, which is chronic, which involves prolonged exposure to cold temperature. So this could be cold water swimming, living in cold environment uh, and playing winter sports such as skiing or taking cold therapy as well. Now let's talk about how you can enjoy the benefits of cold exposure. From kind of like what I <laughs> looked up, a lot of people recommended starting with cold showers because it doesn't really require such a um, high tolerance level, like cold tolerance level, and you could slowly build up to increasing your tolerance to cold. So start with cold showers and then kind of build up to the ice bath, cold plunge. And you could also, uh, if you're interested, play around with winter sports. And who is the cold exposure for? I like to end with that cold exposure is anyone could really enjoy it. A lot of people, if, uh, for example, uh, Wim Hof has kind of popularized the idea and I really think there is a lot of benefit to, you know, putting your body in, in challenging environments because your body is, it's, it adapts really, really well, but make sure if you guys do have certain, um, medical conditions, such as the, the run Raynaud's disease or heart problems or other potential threats, feel free to consult with your doctor before utilizing cold exposure. And with that stated, that's pretty much it. Um, when I first started, I, I, it was really, it was really, really challenging, but I've done this challenge before uh, about a year ago. And the best method that I've kind of figured out was not thinking, just really turning off my logical brain. And once I enter in, like it feels terrible, but it, there's a quote by Seneca who, who states, you suffer more in imagination than in reality. And I think this challenge really summarized um, this quote for me and really instilled this lesson, which is a majority of the challenges that we create, it's really up in the mind. And once you do it, you know, it's really the suffering is not as much as we kind of um, exaggerate it to be. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next one, which is month May. It's currently May 7th as I'm recording this and we're doing a hundred pushups every single day. With that stated, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you guys for listening and talk to you guys soon. Peace.